All right, guys, so I bought 18 handheld Nintendo consoles from Goodwill. Got them all stacked up right here. I already unboxed them. And, you know, we have a lot of DS Lights, DSIs, Game Boys, 3DS, 2DS, even a Game Boy Pocket, and even some games. So in this video, we'll test everything out, see what works, see what doesn't work. And if anything doesn't work, which I'm assuming there's going to be a good bit of non-working stuff, uh, we're going to try to fix it. So go ahead and let me know down below, out of these 18 consoles, how many do you think will work? I'm going to say probably about half of them right off the bat will work. Uh, but of course we'll find out and I'm gonna go ahead and sort these out and we're gonna go console by console and figure out what's up with these things. So we'll go ahead and start with the DS lights. Now the overwhelming majority of these consoles are DS lights. I counted nine here. You know, some of these are very dirty. Like just for example, look at the crack there. There's just so much dirt there. That's nasty. But I mean, frankly, other than that, it seems like it's in decent condition and it's probably gonna work. And so the really cool thing about all these consoles here and every console I buy from Goodwill in the future, I'm going to be auctioning them all off on Whatnot. So go ahead and check my page out down below. I'm going to auction off all of these Nintendo handhelds this weekend on my Whatnot auction. So if you're not familiar with Whatnot, it is a live selling app where essentially I'll get on and live stream. And at the same time I'm live streaming, I will sell video games, consoles, uh, pretty much anything you want to. And then you guys can watch. And if you see anything in this video today that you want to buy, you can come on the live stream and say, hey, I want to see this Call of Duty Black Ops game. And I'll show it to you in person, show the condition and everything. And then you can bid on it in real time. And of course, if you check out the link down below, you get $10 off your first purchase. So let me just kind of show you that process. So it's pretty straightforward. You just download the WhatNot app using my link. You'll get a $10 credit when you sign up. And so once you come in here, you'll click on the gift icon and you'll see your $10 credit there. And basically, once you make a purchase, it'll automatically apply. So let's say I want to watch this PlayStation 1 stream. So I'll click on this and I can see what he is selling. I can bid on it. I can also go to his store and do buy it now stuff, uh, which I actually have some buy it now stuff on my store. So make sure to check that out and you can use your $10 credit on that. But yeah, it's pretty fun. Pretty cool. I like interacting with all you guys. And so make sure to check out my stream. I'm actually doing a stream tomorrow uh, for all of this stuff. Uh, so make sure to check it out. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and start testing out these DS lights. I'm first going to start with the, the very first one you saw, which was this dirty white one but it's clearly very yellowed tons of dirt in the cracks i don't even know how that happens it looks like somebody played with it in like a garden or something but amazingly it still has the stylus and it it feels heavy enough to still have the battery and the hinge still works so that tells me this console probably will work now let's go ahead and try to flip it on i'm assuming the battery needs to be charged which that is correct because it's not turning on so let me go ahead and charge it up and we'll see if it turns on all right guys so i got it plugged in and when i plug it in the orange light lights up briefly like very briefly let's see if we can get that there it goes yeah nothing is happening so one of the first things i'll try when a console is not charging is just to check the battery and we'll replace it with a known working battery if it doesn't boot up all right so upon opening it it does have a battery in there and it doesn't feel bloated or anything uh it could still be a bad battery but we'll go ahead and move on to the next console and see if we can find one that is working and then we'll consider that a known working battery and we'll try it out on some consoles like these. Now this one we can clearly already see there's an issue. So part of the hinge is broken right there. It's just like, yeah, it's got a crack there. So there's only really no hinge. All right, again, no power, probably just needs to be charged. So I plug this one in and it does the exact same thing where it lights up briefly and turns off. That tells me that I think there might be another bad battery in here. And what I'm gonna do real quick is I actually have a DS Lite that I know works like my own personal one. And we're gonna go ahead and swap that battery in and see if it works. So we have our nice flower power DS Lite. Let's go ahead and take that battery out. We'll go ahead and plug in the good one and see if it boots up. Nope, still not seeing any power. Let's see what happens when we plug it in, plug in the charger. All right, so same issue with this one. Even though the good battery is in there, when I plug it in, the charging light comes on briefly, but then goes away. So I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the next console. And we're going to do like a quick test on all of these and just see kind of where they're at. Same thing here. There's a hinge broken. So it opens up. It like looks exactly the same on the inside. Always extremely dirty as well. <laughs> Let's plug this one in and see what it does. All right. So plugging this one in. Aha. This one actually might hold a charge. So that tells me my charger is good. We're probably not going to have enough charge yet to boot it up. But that is good to see that we do have a charging light. So while that one charges up, we'll go to the next one. And this one actually feels like it's in solid condition, other than the fact that it's got scratches all over the bottom screen. It's very dirty in the cracks. Let's we'll try to turn it on. Same issue, no battery. We'll go ahead and plug this one in, see if it works. All right, so we plug this one in. It does charge, so that's good to see. Let me flip it back, and we'll move on to the next one. So this is a red-black one. This one also feels like it's in pretty solid condition. This one actually looks like it doesn't have quite as much dirt and stuff. So once we clean it up, it would actually be a solid DS if it turns on. Oh, and there's a game here. Drawn to life, SpongeBob SquarePants. Nice. No idea if that's worth any money. Let's go ahead and try to turn this on. Of course, there's no charge. Nice. All right, cool. So that one appears to be charging. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So it is good to finally see some consoles charging. It was weird that the first two had the exact same issue. But here's another one. This silver one, also the hinge 
appears to be okay and the screens are actually in solid condition buttons feel nice i've never even seen a silver ds like i mean i'm sure i've seen one but i've never seen one in person it's actually a pretty solid looking console uh, most of that looks to be stuff you could clean off and this one oh this one has some charge already nice aoc one aztec cool so this one actually appears to work so i think i might need to calibrate the touchscreen seems a little bit off all right it seems okay now we'll go ahead and see if the touchscreen reacts better now all right cool yeah so that seems to be a whole lot better now let me just plug in a cart real quick and see if it shows up and actually i just noticed this one already has a cart in it which is interesting because it didn't show up but that cart also seemed pretty dirty so i just plugged it in we'll turn it back on and see if it shows up all right still doesn't show up let me troubleshoot this a little bit all right so you can see it a little bit from this angle but some of the pins in there are definitely off kilter which is why it can't read carts uh so we either need to try to go in there and straighten out the pins or probably just replace the uh, cartridge reader but this thing does seem fully functional other than that and so i guess you might as well try it try out a uh, game boy advance game to see if that at least works because if that works that's still a pretty solid console because you can play game boy advance games on a backlit screen so load it up now i blew in the cartridge slot and the cartridge i know that's like a cardinal sin but i just wanted to see if it would would work so that does appear to work this one's partially working battery at least works console looks solid you just need to needs to be cleaned off a good bit so on to the next ds light got another white one and this one actually looks to be in solid condition open it up the inside looks pretty decent it's a bit dirty and it appears to have some charge Ooh, so that's an issue that's weird. Top screen is just jacked up. So the touch game seems to work. I think it needs to be calibrated as well. Let's we'll see if a game works. All right, so both slots work. And this is another console where you could use it for get GBA games and just play it on the bottom and completely ignore the top screen. Uh, so at least it still works for something. All right, so up next is another pink DS Lite. And I'm not sure why this tape is on here. Oh, that's interesting. Looks like somebody tried to color it in and then taped over it. I'm not sure the point, what the point of that was. Uh, this one is another one that's like extremely dirty in the cracks. That just looks nasty i can't believe i'm touching this but uh let's try to turn it on buttons feel okay no charge we'll try to plug it in and see if it charges up all right so we're back to this one i just turned it on and let's see what it does all right so so far it does appear to work except for the hinges uh jacked up but at least it boots up let's go ahead and plug in some games and see if those work and oh it boots straight into the game so we know the ds slot works let me take that out and we'll see if it will show the gba game all right, cool. So it boots straight into the GBA game as well. So this console does work. Another one where you could actually play legitimately, but uh, of course your, your hinge is broken. So you can either replace the hinge or you can just play like this if you don't care. Or you can just take the top half off and just play on the bottom like a Game Boy Advance, um, which is actually not a bad solution. Now this console is probably the best one I've seen yet. All the buttons seem to click. It just looks pretty solid. I mean, uh, of course I need to wipe it down, but it's not got like dirt in the cracks and all that mess like the other ones do the screen looks pretty good now it's not booting up probably just need to charge it so i plug it in the light comes on so that's good to see now i'm going to come back to one of these other ds lights that i've had plugged in for a little while and we're going to see if it holds a charge and boots up now so it does appear to have a little bit of a charge and ooh, the screen is messed up on top and bottom let me see if i can get this to uh be bright all right so top and bottom work except it has a very odd uh number of pixels missing there and on the top so that's weird but the touchscreen appears to work let me plug in some games and see if they work and as i was plugging the games in i noticed this texas sticker on the back which is <laughs> just kind of funny all right cool so the ds slot works Game Boy advanced slot did not work on first try but honestly i can probably just unplug it and plug it back in a couple times and it'll probably work all right so there it is gba game does work so basically this thing is fully functional the screens are just jacked up now the thing is you could buy two of these DS's like you could buy like I don't know you could probably buy this one right here where it works but the hinge is messed up and you could swap this into this shell something like that I don't know there's a lot of different options and these things are so cheap that you can make it work pretty well just wanted to pause and say by the way I paid about $550 for all these consoles so about $30 per console which is not a great deal I mean honestly at this point the Goodwill auction site is not a great place to get deals everybody knows about it it's basically eBay but everything is untested and does not work so I'm still trying to get some of those consoles to charge up. And in the meantime, let's move on to a different console. So I will say that so far I am a bit disappointed in this lot. Uh, you know, I've found four consoles that do work so far, but they all have issues and I'm waiting some, for some more to charge. But, um, you know, I was hoping more than this would work. But let's go ahead and plug some batteries into these Game Boys and see if they work. And, you know, just looking at them, they look just about like any other Game Boy I've ever seen. They do have a lot of corrosion in the batteries, battery packs, which is probably why they don't work. I mean, if they if they don't work, I don't know if they do or not. So we have fresh batteries into this one. Let's go ahead and see if it boots up. Oh, I see something. I saw something pop up briefly. Oh, might help if I put a game in. All right, put a game in, still doesn't boot up. So when I roll the batteries around a little bit, it starts to boot up. 
Yeah, it's not good. So it looks like we have a jacked up screen. All right, so if we adjust the contrast, we can see it here. All right, so the Game Boy does work, but the screen is very messed up. So as we're playing Uno, you can only see like half the screen. Uh, the other half is just like gone on the sides, but at least it does boot up. So but here's the thing. This would be a great donor Game Boy for, you know, basically putting in a backlit or frontlit screen and keeping the rest stock because it appears to work otherwise. So I'm sure people will be interested in this in the auction uh, just because this is this is actually, uh, you know, you can mod this thing pretty well. Now this one, now second one we have batteries in. This one is also missing the screen protector here, but you can buy one of those for like three bucks. So this one is not even booting up, but I have a feeling it has to do with the corrosion on the battery. So I took the lazy way out and I scrubbed it down uh, without taking the case apart. I got rid of a good bit of the corrosion. There's still some on this terminal here and I tried it out, still does not turn on. So I'm gonna take this whole thing apart and try to clean it out the corrosion a little bit more. And also I learned that apparently you can get rid of the vertical lines fairly easily on the GMG Game Boys by soldering um, some joints right here on the screen. So I might try that later on in the video, but uh, yeah, let me go ahead and try to clean this one up a little bit better. So the battery terminals are currently sitting in some isopropyl alcohol to try to uh, help get the corrosion off. These two terminals look okay, and I'm no Game Boy DMG expert, but the rest of the board looks all right. I could probably clean that up a little bit, but I don't think it'll cause an issue. So we'll wait for that to be done, and I'll scrub it off some more. But in the meantime, I want to go back and try a couple of these DS lights that were charging and see if they work. So this one should be charged up enough to turn on. And there it goes, cool. So it appears to be working. One of the screens looks, is it just me or does the bottom screen just look like the color looks a little bit off? Yeah, the bottom screen is definitely like, I don't know, it's like yellowed a little bit at the edges and then the whole screen, just like the hue of it is a little bit off, but it does work. Let's try out a couple games and see if those work. All right, so GBA game seems to work. Let me take that out and we'll put DS game in and we'll see if it works. All right, so DS game is in and it does work. Cool. So this seems to be fully functional except for the fact that the bottom screen just seems to be off a little bit. Uh, but this is actually probably not a bad DS to pick up if you don't care about the, the screen hue being off a little bit because um, otherwise it seems to work fine and it's actually not that dirty and gross. All right, and the next DS and frankly, we still haven't had a DS or any console for a matter of fact that it just straight up works. There we go. All right, that one turns on. And again, man, another console with a messed up screen. All right, so bottom looks to, seems to be working fine. Buttons work, touch screen seems to work. Let's go ahead and plug in a couple games. All right, so GBA game is in and it does work. And I also just noticed that the power button seems to be a little bit finicky. Like right now I'm trying to turn it off, but it's not turning off. All right, so I blew some compressed air on it and it turns on easier that time. I'm not sure if that was the issue or not, but all right, cool. So the DS game works. So basically the only issue with this is it's got a few lines up here, which honestly, that's not too many lines. Like you could probably still play games, but Frankly, for me, that would be too annoying to play like that. Uh, I know some of you guys, maybe that's not a big deal and you'll, you know, pay a few bucks extra or a few bucks less to uh, get a, uh, you know, almost working DS Lite. But again, there's another console that almost works all the way, but it has like one slight issue, uh, which is, it's frustrating. Um, but let's see, we have one more DS that, yes, it has nice enough charge now. Cool. And here it goes. This one's looking promising. So both screens appear to work. The DS is actually very clean. Outside is not bad, it's just scratched up a bit. I'm looking at the pins inside of the cartridge slot and they look good as well. Oof, this one is looking promising. We might finally have our first fully working DS Lite. So I'm not sure if that's intentional or not, but when I plugged in the DS game while I was doing setup, it just turned off automatically. That was weird, interesting. So this console just turned off by itself a couple times, maybe because it's almost dead. Let me plug it in while I'm playing. All right, so I think it might've just been turning off by itself because it was almost dead in battery. Because now I'm plugging this game in and out and it's not shutting down on its own or anything. Um, now let's turn this back on, make sure the game works, but it's finally, we have one that's looking promising. Cool, that one works. All right, let's go ahead and put in the GBA game and see if that works. All right, let's go. Finally, a fully functional uh, DS Lite. Awesome. So if you guys are looking for a fully functional DS Lite, pick this one up tomorrow or this weekend in my live stream on uh, whatnot, because it's finally, finally one that's fully functional and it actually looks pretty solid considering the other DS Lights we've looked at today. So next up, we have a couple DSi consoles, and actually both of these don't look so bad. I mean, they're pretty scratched up, but they're not extremely dirty or anything. So I don't know, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get lucky here. No power there, and probably no power here. Ooh, wait a second, we have power. Oh, nice. It seems to work just fine. Let's go ahead and see if there's any games downloaded here. All right, so no, game, no games downloaded. We do have some pictures on the camera though. So I'm gonna go ahead and check those out, see if there's anything interesting. So when I try to boot up the camera, it does this. I wonder if the camera is just broken. 
Yeah, so apparently when that error pops up, it just means the camera is not working, as far as I could tell from a Google, quick Google search, which is not a big deal because honestly, I'm not sure how many people are actually using the camera on the DSi. I'm not sure if there's any games that need it. Let's go ahead and plug a DS game in and make sure that works. All right, there it is. Sometimes I find on old DSs and DSIs, you have to plug it in once and then plug it in again. I'm guessing there's just some, you know, dirt and dust on these old consoles. So the art of plugging it in and pulling it back out kind of scrubs off some of that dust and then it starts working. I'm gonna try to camera one more time. Oh, there it is. So the camera works, the front camera works and the back camera does seem to work as well. So that's odd. I'm not sure why when I boot up the camera app, it just doesn't load. So I'm not sure of the issue there, but the DSi does seem to work. Uh, just the camera app won't boot up for some reason, but I could boot up the camera by pressing the L and R button, so weird. But it is good to see a DSi working. And then of course this DSi does not boot up at all, so I'm gonna plug it in, charge it up, and see if it works then. So I plugged in the DSi, and unfortunately I had the same issue that a couple of my DS lights had, where the charging port, or the charging light comes on briefly and then goes off. Uh, from what I read online, it could be a, a fuse in here that's blown. Um, there also, you know, there could just be some corrosion on the board or some dirt or something. Uh, if I have time in this video, I'll open this one up and also the other DS lights and see if I can just clean up the board a little bit. So this one is a Game Boy Pocket, I believe. I've never actually seen a Game Boy Pocket in person, but that's what this appears to be. And obviously the screen is just like mutilated. Uh, so I can already tell you now that we need to replace the screen, which I don't have a replacement for it. But let's at least see if, it, uh, if it'll boot up. Because I mean, the battery terminals look okay. They don't look corroded. So I don't see anything on the screen. I hear nothing. No power. Oh, there we go. All right, we got something so this is the same deal as the other one if i roll the batteries around eventually it pops on nice it's on now okay so like oh wait wait a second there we go okay we can see it a little bit now yes so okay so it is working it's turning on and the game is booting up so it does work the screen look works a little bit if i change the contrast enough i can actually see it on the screen clearly the screen is just like i don't know what the issue is i don't know if it's burnt this could be another issue of like i could just solder some uh, some pins on here. Maybe it'll fix it. I don't know. I'm going to do a quick Google search and see if I can figure that out. So I watched a couple of videos and quick Google search. It appears that the Game Boy Pocket has a polarizer on the front that has been uh, damaged by UV light. Uh, apparently a pretty common problem. Uh, so if you replace the polarizer, it should fix this issue since clearly the Game Boy does work. All right. So next up, we actually have a couple OG DSs. And man, I forgot how heavy these are. Just compared to the, whoa, <laughs> this person's got the Nintendo skin all over this thing which honestly might not be a bad thing because it probably kept this thing looking pretty decent. So if you take the skin off, it actually probably looks decent underneath. But let's go ahead and try to turn it on and see if it has any power. I doubt it does. Probably just need to plug it in and charge it up. I don't have my charger with me right this second, so I might have to push these off till later in the video once I grab. That's interesting. It has bubble wrap around it inside the case. Um, but yeah, I might have to wait until later in the video once I grab my chargers. My Oh, that one's not good. But yeah, I have to grab my, my um, DS charger and so I can charge them up, see them to turn on. This one has a broken hinge, but it actually like stays in place there. So as long as you're not slinging it around, it might actually still work okay. And this one again has some interesting stickers on it. It's got like a Nintendo dog sticker here, just some random stickers of dogs up top and cats. Another one down here. And then just a ton of like dragons and stuff on the front. Godzilla, I don't know, this is this is wild. It's got so many stickers. And so now on to a couple of the heavy hitters. So we have a 2DS, which the buttons seem to be okay at first, uh, first press and first glance, but the screens look like trash, to be honest. They're all scratched up. So the thing is about these screens, you could pretty easily replace this layer right here and have a nice, nice fresh screen up top. Now the bottom one, I'm not sure how easy it is to replace the top film. Um, honestly, once you clean that up, it actually probably won't look too bad because most of that looks like dirt. The top just is all scratched up. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and try to boot this up and see if it turns on. Of course, I'm guessing I will have to plug it in and charge it up, which appears to be the case because it is not booting up. So not a great sign because when I plug in the charger, it just uh, shows no lights. So that's not good. <laughs> I guess I'll leave it plugged in for a little bit and see if it does anything. Now, of course, we also have this 3DS here, which is the uh, most valuable console here in this lot. It actually doesn't look too bad. It's got some scratches. Front has some stickers, of course. The hinge seems to be okay, and now let's see if this thing boots up. Oh crap, it's cracked right there. There's a big old crack right there, and there's one, kind of one over here. You could just replace the case here. Oh, wait, wait, what the heck? Dude, the 3D slider is missing. Are you serious? That's, that's awesome. Touch screen seems to work. I don't think I can advance past this without using the 3D slider. So I know I've been a bit all over the place in this video, but I have a plan for the rest of it. So I charge these two up a little bit. We're gonna test these out, and then the next thing I wanna do 
is open up the 3DS and open up the 2DS and see if we can get these two to work because they're the higher value items. We might get into the DS Lite and stuff later. I probably will get into the Game Boy and uh, swap out the uh, terminal because I tried to clean the other terminal and I could not get the corrosion off even after soaking in isopropyl alcohol. So I have a donor or another Game Boy that we'll just swap out the contact with and see if that works. But first of all, let's go ahead and turn these on and see if these work. I didn't charge them up for very long, but I think they should be charged enough to turn on. That one does turn on, nice. Touch cream seems to work. Let's see, do we have a stylus here? Oh, we do have a stylus. Might need to be calibrated because it's kind of hard to <laughs> click on the confirm right there. All right, so back on and both the screens do look good. All right, so we're having weird issues on this touch screen. When I try to calibrate, it does this and basically does that continuously forever. I've been doing this for like five minutes and it hasn't stopped. So I think there's some issue with the touch screen. I mean, it mostly seems to work. Like I press quit there, I can click that, I can press cancel, I can press select. The only thing I found that does not work is when I press, oh, well, that's kind of finicky, but when I press in the very corner of the screen, it doesn't seem to work. Oh no, dude, it's weird. It's kind of like there's like one little line right here that just acts up. Like, yeah, if I press right there, it does not work. But if I go further down, it works. So after a Google search, it appears that the issue is I need to replace the touchscreen. So, uh, but let's try out some games and see if they work. All right, cool. So the uh, cartridge slot works. And then the Game Boy Advance slot also works. So uh, this is another console where you could just use it for Game Boy Advance games, or you could use it for DS games and just not use that one little strip of touchscreen, or you could just replace the touchscreen, which I looked it up online. You can get a touchscreen replacement for like five bucks, so not too much. All right, and time for this DS, which hopefully this thing works. Clearly, as we saw earlier, the hinge has some issues, but it appears to turn on and both screens look good. Everything looks good. Everything, the touchscreen is actually working here. Let's go ahead and go to our settings and calibrate it and make sure calibration goes through. All right, cool. So the calibration did work. So I guess what you could do is you could replace the shell for this, or you could somehow use these two DSs together and kind of commingle them to create one working DS. Probably the right thing to do is just get a new shell for this one and get a new uh, screen for that one. And classic, of course, I look in there and there's some bent pins. So, dude, I, <laughs> I don't think this lot was untested. I think this was tested and nothing was working. I think Goodwill jipped me on this. Every single console has said some sort of issue. I think I have one console now that works fully. Frankly, the good thing is most of these work enough so you could use them. You could use them as a, as a Game Boy Advance. You could, you know, replace a couple of parts, but it's just, it's annoying that I bought untested consoles and not a single one of them has worked so far, which is, you know, I can't complain too much because they are technically untested. So there was no guarantee for them to work, but it seems to me like somebody tested these, decided they didn't work and then sold them as untested. My next thing I want to do is open up the 3DS and 2DS and just see if I can get them to work. And this 2DS is disgusting. I actually tried to swap out the battery with the battery in my own 2DS. It still doesn't work, so I think there's something going on inside of it. And then this one right here, I think we can get get it to work if I open it up and somehow get this uh, slider to be up. I'll, come, I'll mess with those things and I'll come back. Alright guys, so I've kind of uh, been doing a lot. So... I messed with the 2DS, 3DS, some of the Game Boy, some of the DS lights. So let's start with the 2DS here. So I took it all apart. I took the motherboard out, took all the screws out. I cleaned everything and pretty much everything looks okay inside. You know, the case is extremely dirty um, and that, you know, that could attribute to why it's not working, but I really did not see anything on the board that was sketchy except for this one ribbon cable, which I try, I'll try to zoom in on now. So like right there, it looks like there might be some contacts missing. Um, I don't really have a magnifying glass that works well for this or any kind of magnifying device so your view is as good as mine here and i you know i think there's something going on there i don't know if this ribbon cable is for power or not it's not anywhere close to the power button so i don't you know i don't know and i really didn't trace out the power the only thing i traced is i verified that when i plug in the charger i am seeing uh voltage here so that means it should charge the battery but there's nothing lit up down here it doesn't turn on still no power so unfortunately the 2ds is a no-go now, if this ribbon cable assembly is the issue, it should be a matter of just desoldering this one, putting a new one on. Uh, but I'm not going to do that here because I'm trying to put all these on the whatnot auction in a few days, so I don't have time for that to come in. But I have some other good news. So we have this 3DS. Man, this thing just tracks so much dirt behind. This 3DS, I was able to uh, basically get a really thin screwdriver down into the side here and slide the 3D slider up. So now when we turn it on, I can actually go through the setup. Basically, the I have actually have not turned it all the way on to uh, verify, you know, all the buttons and whether a cartridge works or not. But assuming all of that works, the main issue now is that you either have to have 3D on all the time, or you need a small screwdriver you can stick down there and slide it back and forth whenever you want to. Probably the right way to do it is to take the entire thing apart 
and put the new piece in there so that it'll work in the future. You know, it's kind of up to whoever buys this thing, but yeah. All right, so the setup's complete. We'll try this Animal Crossing game, see if it works. Cool, so here it is. We're on the home screen now, and it appears to work. You can see the game shoot up there. You know, the touch screen works. The uh, screen up there, up here works fine. It looks weird on the camera because it's in 3D mode right now, but it's good to see this thing actually working. So next up, we're back to the DMG Game Boys. So this one actually fully works now. Uh, this one did not have the screen on it before and it did not have uh, good battery contacts. Basically, I took some battery contacts from another DMG Game Boy I had, put them in here, it started working, and then I put this uh, screen film on here that I already had, and it looks pretty nice now. It's not cleaned up, but it does work. And then this other one, this is the one that was working, but it had vertical lines on the screen. Um, I ended up harvesting some of those, or actually took all of them out. Some of them looked pretty bad. Some of them I used another another DMG Game Boy. And also, just to add, I have a few other DMG Game Boys that I will be selling on the What Not auction. They're actually from the last time I bought Nintendo consoles from uh, Goodwill. So this one works. Battery's a little bit finicky. This one works, but there's black lines on the side, and this one's a completely black screen. So I think some of these just need that little soldering trick that I talked about earlier. I could do that myself, but uh, frankly, I think it's, I know there's some people that like to have little projects and stuff and you can get a cheaper price. So I figured I'd auction it off, um, you know, without doing the soldering before. But this one I probably will keep and fix it myself. And then next up, we got a couple of interesting ones. So this white DS right here is the very first DS we tried out. If you remember, it's the really yellow one that's supposed to be white and it did not work at all. Like you would plug it in and the charging light would briefly come on and go off. And now it does work. Long story short, I took a fuse I took F2 from this one and put it on this motherboard. I used my multimeter and found out that F2 was blown, which was causing it not to charge or, you know, turn on at all. Took it from there, put it there, and now this one works uh, pretty well. The only issue is clearly this thing is like <laughs> extremely dirty and nasty. So I also found out a couple of things with the DSi. So we knew the blue one worked. Uh, we knew the red one did not work because it didn't charge and it did not turn on. But I figured out that it was just the battery. Um, at least that was part of it. It still doesn't charge, but uh, the battery was bad. So or not charged at all. So once I got the battery charged up, this console does turn on and work now. At first, games did not work, but I fixed that. As you can see, put a game in and it shows up. Essentially what I did to clean the cartridge slot is I put some isopropyl alcohol on these contacts and then shoved it into the slot and went in and out a few times and it's all cleaned up now and it works. And then another funny story is I actually had to utilize this, uh, this board again and I used F1, the fuse here, to put into here because when I was testing this thing out, I, I kept taking the battery out, putting it back in, and one time I accidentally flipped the battery around so the polarity was wrong and it basically fried one of the fuses, uh, but I had to pull out my solder soldering iron, took it off here, put it in there, and boom, turned right back up. Only issue is it still does not charge, but other than that, it works fine. So there you go guys, after all of that, we finally ended up with a decent number of working consoles. And I'm also going to throw a few other consoles into the whatnot auction like this Game Boy Color that works. It's just very dirty and it has no battery cover. And I'm also going to throw in a few other DS's as well. These all have various issues. They're actually from the last time I bought Nintendo consoles from Goodwill. Uh, so we're going to have like 30 Nintendo consoles that I'm auctioning off in this, uh, this auction. So make sure to check out that link down below to see it. And these are the DS games that came with these consoles. Just random games, Nintendo Dogs, Little Mermaid, Drawn to Life, Wipeout, Tiger Woods. I don't think any of them are high value. Namco Museum and Nintendo Dogs might be the highest value ones at like 10 bucks maybe. I don't know, but I'll, I'll auction these off as well. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. And of course, hit that whatnot link to check out the auction when I sell all of this stuff. And thanks for watching.